pressure. Um, I mean, what is some of the? Have you ever switched seats on this bridge, Titanic? Have you ever? Nope. Never. No, no, of course. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so I think we kind of touched on it in a, in a, in other podcasts too. And so I think what comes to mind to me is automatically just fill in the void with anything, um, whether it's problematic or not. And so a lot of times for guys anyway, it's women. Um, and the idea that if... And, and with girls, it's boys. I mean, it makes sense. We just happen to be three men. Is if it I no a, as well, much, you abs- think? Absolutely. You think I mean, it is as much? From I I've sponsored some, some women, and uh-huh. they have... Pretty much the same issues we yeah. do. They show up a little different, but yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I heard a speaker on Friday night talking about it sure. and, and kind of going through that stuff for years sure. into recovery. Sure. So it just that if, if there's a void. My switching seats in the Titanic, I, I don't even know it would be switching seats. On the t- it's just that spiritual void that I felt when I put the stuff down and I still had no insight to what drove me and why I, I had these behaviors. Sure. And so I still suffer from obsessive compulsive thoughts today. Sure. Things to fill the void. And so... I've gone through phases in recovery where it's like, all right, I want to get a new apartment. And it's not something that's going to sink my ship, but it's going to affect other areas of my life in the sense that I spend, not at Blue Crest, just so you know, Richie, but inordinate amount of time on hot pads, for example, looking for apartments. Hot pads is a website to find an apartment. And I'll months searching for the right apartment. It's, It's screwing up my life because I'm not effective at work. I'm spending all the time looking for an apartment. Get the apartment. Move in, car's not good enough, right? <laughs> Just in, as an example, now I'm spending inordinate amount of times waking up in the morning. Instead of hitting my knees and praying and going through my routine, I'm on cars.com looking at cars. And I've done now, this stuff. I'm, I'm not saying years. that's not, not saying it's that's not, not relevant. I know it's I'm not, not saying it's not relevant. It it's is not, not exactly relevant. on topic. I know what because, you're Because, you know, that's one of the first things that we'll tell people when they come in. People will come in and, and, and when they first get sober, they go usually one of two ways. Number one, they pour themselves into helping others and working with other people at, at the expense of everything else where they overdo it, where they're working with, you know, 18 people, they're sponsoring their meetings, they take on six commitments and they're totally engaged where everything else is suffering as a result of it. And then you've got people who go the other way. They're finally sober and they're playing catch up. And they're saying to themselves, you know, all my friends have graduated college. Right. Oh, everyone's got married. Ooh, who's got a car? The, the right. Who's got a house? And I've got nothing and I've got debt and I got to And they throw themselves into work like banshees and they don't help anybody else. Meeting, suffering, whatever. Usually need, well, if you're going to do one of those bad things, the imbalance is always better working with people and helping others than going after to the money. To ensure staying to sober. To ensure staying sober. But it's still a form of sickness as well. But not that this is not a relevant topic because it is. And we could do a whole podcast just on that stuff. Having said that, it's not really switching seats on the spiritual Titanic. It's so not. now you started off by saying women. So I'll throw one out there. And it's not a personal experience. If it was, I would say, because I don't care. I'm open book. But I have a lot of sponsees, a lot of people that I've talked to in my circles, in the in sobriety circles, um, where guys come in and they engage when it's, when you say with women, they go to massage parlors. And the massage parlors becomes their new high-risk behavior. It becomes their new form of release where they're not hurting anyone and blah, blah, blah. And I've seen it g- happen where it takes on unbelievable form where guys are now, like, they're going four times a week. They're spending money okay. that they can't afford to spend. Sure. They're just, that's their new drug dealer. Right now, they're short on their rent. They're short on their car payment. Why? Because they're doing that. They don't feel good about it, and they're now chasing that, and that becomes them switching speeds on the uh, seats on the spiritual Titanic, meaning that you took one unhealthy, you know, in a uh, practice of drug addiction and alcoholism or whatever you were doing. Now you've gotten sober, and you're like on a, a, a hopefully trying to grow along spiritual lines in a spiritual pathway. Now you start engaging in another set of unhealthy behaviors on top of this new spiritual lifestyle that you're supposed to be living. And all you did was switch seats on the spiritual Titanic, meaning that spirituality is good for what it is and all your practices, but now you're engaging in something that's going to take you down that road that you just got off. Totally, totally jarred my memory. And so, (laughs) and I'm thinking about it, and it wasn't in early recovery. It was... You know, I had long-term... Oh, wait, hold on. I want to throw this out there. Somebody just said, did he just vape? And that was a little while ago. And um, yeah, they probably were talking about you. I don't think I've hit it up I yet. Mine's or maybe it was me. I'm just not even thinking. But I'll throw it out there because we've actually had some legit, and I get it, like complaint 
Um, not complaints, <laughs> but people who kind of had something to say. I mean, like, you know, I think it's disgraceful that you guys are vaping Vape group. while you're doing All a, about it. You know, a, listen, this isn't channel two, and we don't, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm on a network channel and, you know, the kids are watching. I mean, this is a recovery thing, and we're all a bunch of recovered addicts. And, you know, uh, what I would say is if I still smoked two packs of Marlboro Red a day, I'd probably be smoking a Red. Which is terrible, but I'd have titanic. an ashtray here, and I would be, yeah. It's Doesn't mean it's titanic. Kind of, you know I, mean? I don't know. But though? for me, I switched off of the Marlboros, and I went to the vape. And look, I'm not saying one way or the other, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. It's not good for you. There's very, very few things that is vice in nature that's actually good for you in any way. I don't subscribe to, uh, ascribe, subscribe to vapes. I don't suggest that... Kids start vaping. I think it's stupid. You should I'm glad quit. I'm not smoking. Quite and frankly. Inevitably, my 10-year-olds, dude, they're being taught in school. I don't know if anybody has any 10-year-olds, but man, do they, and good stuff, but they educate them in a way I was never, my kids look at people smoking cigarettes and like, Dad, why would he be take, ingesting that poison into his lungs? Do you know what that does to you? And I'm like, wow. Like, they've been indoctrinated to, the, you know, that doctor Good. death is knocking on that person's door. Good. And they're right to teach them that because it's all true. And now they see me vape and they're like, that's not much better, Dad. Mm -hmm. We're hearing a lot of things about the vape. And so, you know, the that's probably true. So, yes, the answer is, and to go, <laughs> go back to Mark, the answer is yes, you did see us vape. You probably will. Um, because uh, we are not saints. <laughs> it's, like, it's a good justification as any, but I'm not going to go an hour without vaping because uh, this is my podcast. And when you do your podcast, you should do one where no one's allowed to vape. That's it. Guests are allowed to vape too. I'm not the only one. I'm Stop debating. Smoke, smoke, you know. Smoke. I was going to say. I was and like, just so you know, this where we do this podcast is actually in my personal basement. And so I can vape here if I want to. There's no rule against it. I hear you. So I'm like debating whether I even tell my ex main experience, the memory you just jogged uh, with switching seats on the spiritual Titanic, but I wasn't new in recovery. I was actually huh? long-term recover, recovered, and but I'd left, right? I, I had pretty much slowly but surely stopped having any accountability to anybody like a sponsor. I, I no longer was taking inventory. I was already kind of living life a little dirty and gambling was a part of that. And I was surrounding myself with like-minded people doing like-minded things. And it wasn't about recovery. It was about gambling and women. And so with about, I don't know, 10 years sober, I approached a friend of mine one night. Um, and I said, you know, like, what's the number to that massage parlor that you go to? And, uh, I had that inkling inside that this stuff was probably not a good idea. And the guy even said to me, and he wasn't in recovery. He was probably the antithesis of recovery. And he was like, but you don't do that stuff. And I was like, yeah, I know, but I'm going to now. <laughs> you know, like, I'm going to now. Because what I didn't understand and didn't know in the, in the moment is that the void was already coming. The void was there. Mm -hmm. The lack of helping others, the lack of being involved in any sort of real recovery left the void. The void came back. It always does. And I, I, I was looking to fill it with something. And I said, so just give me the damn number, dude. Like, give me the place. And so he gave me the name of the place and the number of the place. And it was late at night. It was probably about 1030 at, at the time. Not that late, but late enough. And I called them up and they said, all right, we're open till 11. Come. And I was here in, 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 nearby in Lake Totua. And the place was down in Secaucus. And um, I was going to go to this massage parlor and get, you know, whatever, happy ending, the whole deal. And... Uh, and so I'm driving down, and I'm racing down because I want to get there before they close, right? <laughs> and this is a true story. I mean, this no, is I'm into it. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're hanging on the edge I'm of dri seats. I'm driving down. I'm I driving down the road. Usually <laughs> ends, but I have a feeling this, this sums up. Really so, wait so, but it's, for a curve it's ball. crazy, man. And it's not that much of a curveball. But I'm driving down the highway, and I hit a traffic jam on Route Three, going to down the thing. And in the moment, I said, "Dude, what, myself, is, what? Hold on a second. What is that?" It's a call. Someone's on a phone call. It's like speakerphone. Oh, just no, I think it's us reverberating back on a delay. I think it is too. Because we're on a delay here because I'm watching there you it. Go. There you go. All right, go ahead. Facebook. So, so I'm driving on Route 3. I hit this traffic, traffic jam, jam. And in the moment, I still have enough recovery in me to think to myself, I think this is God's way of putting a barrier between me and getting to this place. And they're going to close and I'm not going to make it in time. But of course, like a good alcoholic addict that I am, I power through, race through, <laughs> right? Get down, get to the place, go through the process, go into the massage bar, whatever, get a the whole deal. And what did it do for a guy like me? 
it became exactly what you just talked about. It became a thing where I'm not using drugs, but I'm now getting like doing that shit. Right. And it's sick for a million stuff. different reasons, excuse me, stuff. And it's sick for a million different reasons, but then it became the type of thing where it became the thrill Almost like using. Mm. You don't know what's yeah, going to happen. You don't know if the cops are going to bust the door down. You don't know. Like It's just a million things. Sure. And the thrill. That high risk behavior. So, right? We love that stuff. And so it got to the place where I was high risk behavior. Secretive. I'm lying. I'm not talking about. Uh, clearly, I'm telling no one about this stuff. And then it's to the point where I'm like, and I forget about this part of the actual relapsing substances. Because there was a couple of times that I was like, I'm all so hopped up. Like, let me get a clonopin. Right before I go, so I can stay a little more relaxed and stuff. And it just became this whole thing. Eventually, for a guy like me, that seat in the spiritual Titanic is not the seat that I'm looking to go down on. And so, when someone put a Percocet in my hand, I took it. You know what I mean? Right. But that was my biggest experience of all. And it was just, you know, it was the beginning of the end for me. So that was what, like 11 years ago, 12 years ago? It, it was like, like 10, 10 years right. ago. Yeah, and you were sober at that point for 10, 10 years. 10 so, years, yeah, 10 yeah. years away. But yeah. no one, and anyone that I would have talked to, if I had talked to anybody, you had already told me three years prior that if I kept doing what I was doing, you know, I was going <laughs> to use, and I was like, F this guy, I hung up the phone and cut you off. Because nobody of needs that type of negativity. <laughs> of course. And Which is interesting when you do switch seats on the spiritual Titanic and you are engaging in a behavior that's, you know, going to lead you down that road again. You know, sober-minded people that are around you are going to be like, hey, bro, you know, none of us, like, look, I'm not going to be somebody's nag. Like, who am I to say, right? Like, there's no, you know, we are not saints, and I get that. And, you know, nobody lives that perfect, you know, chaste you know, Buddhist lifestyle, maybe some do, but none of us really that I'm aware of, you know, have done it. We engage in what we engage in, but then there's some stuff that goes beyond, you know, there's that, you know, fringe, right? Like I never want to lose certain, like there are some vices that I still enjoy engaging in that I don't want to cross over that line. And so I make sure I keep myself, if I still have that power to do it, Big, is a yeah, different yeah. story. When you lose the power, you lose the power, but it's our job as, you know, if you have a sober friend, it speaks to friendship ideal. Yeah. You know, back yeah, in the day, friendship, I would never bring that up because I don't want him to... You always called it what? Spiritual... Spiritual consent. Law of consent. consent. Spiritual yeah. law of consent, which means that, you know, you have a responsibility. Call me not just Not just the permission. That's an assumed permission because we're friends. And if you're really a friend of mine, I have not only the permission, but I have the responsibility to say, dude, what you're doing is bullshit. And it's going to lead you stuff, down a road you don't want to bull stuff. It's going to lead you down a road that you don't want to go down. Just be mindful. But, you know, invariably when we're in that position and we're in that mindset, our answer is like, oh, no, I hear you, bro. <laughs> Hold, you know, d disconnect. Yeah. And that's somebody who don't you're not really looking life. to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need it. Exactly. Now, but talking about switching speeds on the spiritual Titanic and where that can take you, you know, you're talking about that's the end of your story. But really where you first switched seats is you started um, an illegal gambling operation in your in your basement, right? And you were doing uh, the card games. That's where <laughs> Nick is laughing because Nick knows the story well. But that's really where it started for you, yeah. engaging in that high risk, unhealthy behavior. And that one was was weird because it wasn't like most of the behaviors we engage in, where there's usually little consequences. If it, but that one, was, there was actually a lot of reward behind it financially. And so the consequences came later. There was really just benefit for you, right? That you were yeah. going to make all this money and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, and inevitably it, it started got rated and great <laughs> and innocently enough, right? But again, like I don't do anything in moderation really. So that was uh, that whole thing was going to be one night a week. We're just going to play cards and I'll make a little money. And then it was two, then it was three. And that immediately took precedence over recovery. Like at that point, I still made a couple meetings here and there, but then. You know, the keyest night of all to have a card game was the night that I would go to a meeting. So that became, you know, I don't need to go to meetings. I was dragged to my 10-year celebration. That's part of my story. Yeah. I didn't want to go. I was the guy that nobody's ever seen before. Like, who's this guy getting a 10-year coin? Who is right. he? I was that guy. I hate it today yeah. when I see that. Yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it started then. I mean, it started long before that. It just the, the seat switch, the real seat switch happened a little bit later. It actually goes further back if you think about it. We have it always a long does, history, dude. It right? It always does, yeah, man. Got weird for a minute there. Even amongst our whole crew of people in recovery, it just it was centered around poker games. It's right? true. It was crazy. It's shit. true. When the, when No Limit Hold'em became like the thing, the movie Rounders, everyone was like, bah, bah, bah. But you know, when it starts when, out all innocent, like yeah, yeah, here we and there, all playing and loving it, tournaments oh, and dude. this, it was so much fun to all do together. And then that activity became. 
like once a week, twice a week, three times a week, all the whole weekend playing. It's like once in a while there was games. a fight, right? Oh my once God. in a while. Yeah. I remember Danny, rest his soul. God rest his soul, Danny. Being like on a Wednesday, like there was a poker tournament tonight. Why don't you play? I was like, dude, it's a Wednesday night. Play cards on a Wednesday? No way. Like, what are you talking about? I'll go on a Friday or a Saturday. I'm not going on Wednesday poker. That was like drinking in the morning. <laughs> Just that's something I don't do that. Right? And I was like, I'll come one time. And that was that. You know, yeah. just game over. Thankfully, all that stuff has been pretty much lifted. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I've been inclined to even play a poker game. Yeah. It might well. be a trip, you know, whatever. But <laughs> By and large. Right, right. By and large. What about you, Stas? The Philly, cr- the Philly crew down there, what are you guys, uh, especially the Greek Philly people, like what, 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 any s- switch and seats? Or are you like, yeah, the, I are mean, you a saint? No, nah, definitely not a saint. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be amongst the round table if I was a saint. True, I, true. But, uh, I, but I can't, it's crazy. I, there's certain things that I actually did never, like, really, really engage with. I was around it, but I'm actually participating. I mean, like, for instance, like, gambling and prostitution and stuff like that. I I was too busy getting high. I was too busy literally. Uh, but what about clean? That's what we're talking that's about. That's really so, what we're right, talking so, about. Right? So the clean Nobody's stuff. Nobody's got time for prostitutes. When you're high. I mean, right. Well, no. I what? stories, I'm like, what? No, so when <laughs> I got clean. <laughs> so my story's a little bit. And maybe it's not different in any stretch of the imagination. When I first got clean, I was still promoting. Right? I was still doing the nightclub thing. I was still getting that fast cash. I was getting the door, this and that. And I was still doing, you know, whatever you can imagine somebody like me would do. That's what I did. Um, and then my story is that I did have a relapse. Right? And then when I came back right away, uh, I said I was going to do it differently, and I promised myself I was going to do it differently because I never wanted to use again. Um, but the obsession to use drugs was lifted again, again, miraculously. But then this, the obsession that, like to live clean was just like it was unfathomable to me to not go do what the F I wanted whenever the F I wanted. And who are you and who are you to tell me that? And for years, um, I just... You know, listen, <clears throat> when you when you live in a rap song and you're the product of the last gangster movie that you just watched, that's who you are. That's what I was. So my spiritual guidelines were revolved around that. And, you know, I walked around. I carried a gun. I did this. I was just, a, you know, I was an absolute. I was a disaster. If you could kick one person out of your fellowship, like, I was him. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you guys all had a meeting, you were like, look, I, I know it's against the, the principles. There was a time where I had a list of people I <laughs> yeah. wanted to kick right, out. Right, but you know, like, it. when you look over the traditions and stuff like that, For you're a lot like, less. yeah, there's a, there's a, you know what I mean? <laughs> there's that gray area. Or why is there this protection for this particular <laughs> Yeah, so, um. But again, with shopping, especially, you know, people, places and things, but it was more money, property and prestige. Um, the inability to just, you know, just womanizing, just barbaric, that type of stuff. There was never, and it was just obviously a lack of, you know, self-esteem, it was pure insecurity, but there was never, there was never uh, anything that I knew I couldn't buy. I had to fill it. I mean, there was a while there, and this is strictly ego coming out in this, but it's an invitation so people can understand the switching of the seats. There was a time where I couldn't go without buying myself uh, like a new car, right? Like, you know what I mean? And um, like you said, the, the individual that thrusts himself into meetings and, you know, into service and then literally everything else falls apart. I couldn't let Richie be more successful than me. I couldn't let Mark be more successful, but it was all financially driven. Uh, there was a f- there was a time where I couldn't leave my house without a certain amount of money, cash. I didn't care if I was late on the mortgage. The idea of you seeing how much money I had on me was mm-hmm. a representation of literally who I was. And we're not talking about a lot of money. We're talking about, I mean, it's a lot of money. A thousand bucks is a thousand bucks, but that was the idea of, you know, pure success for me, just the maybe to get a, a shock out of you yeah. or something like that. But, I mean, uh, clean, uh, there, there's a natural attraction that I have to destruction. Sure. There's a natural attraction that I have to organize chaos. And if I can manipulate it in the right way. You know, and usually it sneaks up on you, right? Like, in other words, it doesn't seem like a bad idea at the time. You know what I mean? Me and my... Hey, did you ever hear that old story? Well, it's an old innocent. movie. But it's reminded me of the guy who... Uh, once climbed to the top of a 10-story building and jumped off the roof. And people standing at the open windows on the whole way down heard the man saying, so far, so good, so far, so good. <laughs> uh-huh. And, you know, I mean, inevitably, we know how it's going to end, but that's but it usually sneaks up on you, and I'm going to, I'll jump in, because I wanted to, you know, 
it's we all have individual this is what i value experience we can talk about you know switching seats and like how did you switch seats what did that look like how did you get, get out the other side of it what you know what i mean what's the lesson learned i mean that's the stuff that i consider to be to be valuable so now i come in and i get sober sober right so you know again i differentiate not just abstinent but i get sober i meet with the sponsor i go through steps i have an amazing experience spiritual awakening and I've never had that kind of connection before in my life. And I start sponsoring people and I'm working with people. And now all of a sudden, life beyond your wildest dreams. Like stuff starts happening. I get offered a dream job that I have no business even having. Life is just taken on. It's, ama it's become amazing, right? Life's become absolutely amazing. All the cash and prizes. So I'm spiritually fit. I end up, you know, AA girl meets AA boy. We get married. Um, we, uh, we get pregnant to have twin babies. Now I've got twin babies. I'm living in a mansion in Wyckoff, New Jersey. Like I'm a kid from Staten Island. I couldn't <laughs> rub two. You know, five right. years earlier, I was rolling, stealing change out of pockets in my family's closets and, and off of, you know, for, yeah. picking cigarettes off of parking lots, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. grounds for to smoke. And now all of a sudden I've got like a mansion in Wyckoff like in a period of five years because when you get sober, amazing things can happen. So now I've got the cash and prizes. I've got everything's going really, really well. And Mark was talking about the poker thing, the gambling, right? But so now it, this is an interesting one too because so now I start playing online poker. Now I don't even have to go. Like I was going to people's houses, but I didn't get it. Like you ran a game, so you were, but me, I would go, but then I wouldn't go again. It's a big process to go and to be there all night and blah, blah, blah. But once you get introduced to online poker, man, online, you can do a lot of, like, bad shit. You know, bad damage, stuff online, right? no. A lot of totally damage. Anonymous. You know, I'm no millennial, but, you know, I get hooked in pretty good. And so now I start playing on PokerStars.com, and I'm playing, you know, I'm playing tournaments. Now, keep in mind, I've got a lot of money at this point, right? So I was doing really, really well. It wasn't a matter of the money. The money was, I didn't lose, I wasn't losing money. So that's not like it's interesting. People automatically associate. You would think that the story's yeah, going to be losing where time. I start. It's the time. So now I'll tell you what actually happened with me. This never. I'll, I'll ruin the end of the story. It never became about money. I never really lost any real money. I once won three online tournaments in a row. I remember in that. Thirty six hours. Do you remember? That? I do. I would no. You were sleep. like home sick or something. Well, I stayed home sick. And, well, you're right. I was legit sick, but then I stayed home because I got involved in a tournament. That I and these are like like ten dollar tournaments. It's not even like I was. But I'm on this thing for hours. I won like almost six thousand dollars in 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 thirty six hours. I won three tournaments back to back to back first place, which is unheard Richfield of. Park, you were in Richfield Park. You're talking stuff. people like two three thousand people joining these tournaments. Yeah, at Richfield Park at the time. No, I was I was that was a home group, but I was living in Wyckoff at the time. Were you okay? Yeah, and so so. Now I'm doing this and I'm engaged in this and I'm, I'm not going to work. I'm calling in sick to an amazing job for a $10 tournament. Like, you know, 5,000 bucks is really not, you know, when you have a kind of job that I had working on a trading desk on Wall Street. But it wasn't a matter for the money for me. It was that the I thrill. win, the yeah. thrill, the gamble. The, it releases endorphins. It's a high in and of itself. Gambling addiction can be even more brutal than the rest for people who cross that line. Having said that, so now this is the part that's fucked up, uh, messed up. Apologize uh, to SoundCloud and Spotify and YouTube. Um, hopefully, we can they, block that. They out. boot us. First, yeah. yeah, but I mean, just one accident, a little thing. But we got to be careful. So, <laughs> you know, I haven't done it in the whole of the podcast that we've done. I've been very good. It's a soft F. So anyway, I will say that I just envision this right now. I'm sponsoring eight people. Um, home group. Um, sober, 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 sober. But now, all of a sudden, I'm playing in these tournaments, and now I'm playing in the tournaments at night. I'm playing on the weekends. I'm playing during the day on the weekends. I'm playing. Now, my wife at the time is like, Richie, you know, Josh and he didn't need to be changed or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm playing in a tournament and I'm screaming at her like, leave me alone. You take care of it. I'm in the middle of something. And I'm like, I don't even hear myself doing it because I'm like, is she kidding me? I'm <laughs> in the middle of a tournament, this all important tournament. Never mind my one and a half year old twins. That right, need, right. You know, to be changed, like I'm, I'm in it now, right? And I'm doing like, doesn't she realize that I'm gonna be a poker maven? Like I need to win, take this thing down. And like, that's the mindset. <laughs> now I'm sponsoring people. I'm doing amazing stuff in other areas of my life, but not in this area of my life. Like I'm switching seats on the spiritual Titanic. I found myself there. And she said, I don't remember what she said, said something to me. And she said, but she didn't like come at me. She was like, you know, it's a little scary that blah, blah, blah. And I heard her. 
Mm. I don't know why. Maybe because I was sponsoring people. Because I maybe I was just in a position where I was able to hear her, but I heard her. You know what I mean? I went to my sponsor and I was like, I think you know maybe blah blah blah. And he's like, dude, what's wrong with you? Because I yeah. wasn't telling him any of this stuff, right? It was, was a, just because it was nobody was getting hurt. I'm not spending. What's the problem? I'm not spending money. If anything, I'm even up money. So what's the what's the what's the issue? That's not a gambling addiction. You're not. You know what I mean? Like maybe it never did it ever cross the line to addiction? No, I was able to stop because I realized what I was doing was unhealthy. But it could easily have gone there. And just because I didn't lose a whole bunch of money doesn't, doesn't mean, mean it wasn't that a problem. I was. It was a big problem yeah. for me. I'm shirking other responsibilities and, as a sober man. Right. That's and insane. I, like like we were just. Just to circle back, I mean, that's, the, I think, one of the biggest misconceptions. Like, people, especially when they're not sharing, like, where they are with their sponsor. Or even their sponsees, doesn't matter. Anyone can pull you up on it. And, like, you mentioned it before. Like, we have a saying, like, you know, I love you enough to hurt your feelings. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we, we have, have a responsible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have, uh, we got, I, we have, we're in each other's lives for a reason. I have a responsibility to call you out. Maybe, like, not in public, but one-on-one at least. Um, but when people are, are successful at maybe doing something wrong, do you know what I mean? It's hard. Like, you know, when I was in the restaurant business, all I wanted to do was work. Everything else was a hassle, relationships, whatever, because the money was the main focus. And if I was making money, that means I was being rewarded, mm -hmm. like the cash and prizes. Yeah. And I get to go buy stuff, and I get to go feel good, and I get to show exactly how I want to be perceived, right? And that takes a lot of effort um, when you're not paying attention to anything else, right? When you're, when, you're, when you're locked in obsession and compulsion of this is the image or what, whatever it is. But like you said, like your wife said something. You were like, are you kidding me? You know how busy I am right now? This is life or death, and you're one and a half year old. Luckily, you were in a position to hear something. It's hard, especially, I mean, when you get clean young, I mean, again, not having role models and just, you know, deciding who your role models are is dangerous as well. Um, whether it was some gangster that I saw on TV or some rapper that I wanted <clears> to be, like, it's just, but I think that sometimes, at least for me, I can't tell you what's necessarily spiritual. I can tell you what's unspiritual now because I feel it. It's a gut thing. It's a, I remember it's that. A, it's yeah. a guiding principle right. that I don't always know what God's will for me is, but, but I, I know usually it. know what it ain't. Right. So it's a guiding principle. And usually right. when we have acquired some clean time, our F ups, like our when we slip up, it's it's catastrophic sometimes. <laughs> and luckily, and we're, we're aware of it now, but the way I used to live does no longer fit that outfit. It's too small for me right now. Do you know? And I remember making that that spiritual switch, whether it's a seat, the Titanic, or whatever, maybe I just jumped in the lifeboat, and I was, you know, and there was room on Lucky the door. Lucky you, dude. Lucky uh, you, too. Yeah. I and, didn't. And, no, yeah, fair enough. But, I mean, I can tell you, when I made that transition over, with a few years clean, to get with the sponsor, like, actually get involved, looking back, and I can remember having that feeling, probably just, like, a month in, of people's perceptions of me in the rooms, like, Yo, man, you really changed. Like they saw it, and looking back for the at, worse or for the, for the better. When oh, I've actually oh, when I actually committed, yeah, yeah. like, because yeah. that persona was just like literally, I just unzipped and got into a new one. And looking sure. back, I said to myself, I was like, How did I ever make it this far living yeah. like that? Sure, you know. Um, but that's not to say that like I'm far from good perfect. looks, bro. That's <laughs> you know, I'm gonna say to you that the varying there are varying degrees of stuff as well. Because you're like, oh, you guys were lucky, but not me. Now, I'm not, we justify nothing, right? Because you got to be careful. I'm not talking to young people. In rec well, I am probably. So Maybe, don't, yeah. You know, you hand that football off to someone and they run it right into the end zone. But understanding context, what I'm saying, there are varying degrees, right? And so think of the differences. Like you said, oh, you were very lucky because I paid the ultimate price with a relapse after 10 years, whereas I didn't. Think about the differences. At that point, you weren't going to any meetings. You weren't sponsoring anybody. You were... Your, yeah, I was much further gone. But the activity you were engaged in, too, you were around gambling addiction all day, every day with that kind of people. There's a certain thing about that kind of lifestyle. The people were into that borrowing money. Who owes big pots, little pots, people angry. Like, you were in that emotional sea of insanity day in and day out, and you were profiting off of it. And you weren't going to meetings, and you weren't sponsoring people, and, and you weren't and writing drug inventory, use. you weren't yeah. playing. But then, the eventually, life. but eventually, it led you to, you know, somebody giving massage paw, and then somebody gave you clonopin, and then it's like, okay. But I was you. gonna say, I mean, the, the, but if you didn't, there was a, ch a time where maybe I could have hopped off the train. Maybe Abs I could have. Absolutely. Maybe if I had been doing some other stuff, and. But but, I my, think but, at the end but, but the point I'm making is that when I when you and I back then when I said to you like hey Mark and you were like forget that guy I don't want to talk to him anymore, 
when my wife brought something up to me, I was able to hear her. Why? I'm sick as you are in every way imaginable. No, no doubt. But at that time, you I was sponsoring disengaged. people. I was going to meetings. I was, I was able to hear her. I was able to see. I got engaged. I switched seats. I was on the spiritual Titanic. It was sinking. Mm. I was engaged in sickness and in, in, in that was pervasive. But I was able to still pause. I was able to stop. I was able to hear. I was able to see. Why? Not because I'm not as bad as you. I'm in some ways worse in addiction, why, like addictive personality and with gambling and all that. Like I have the propensity for that for sure. But I was engaged in a different way and I was able to hear it and thank God for that. And so I guess that's the kind of moral of the, it's not whack-a-mole is going to happen. Like I don't know anybody who's becomes a saint and never has any kind of a life problem or something they Nothing struggle pops with. And with something comes up where you start engaging in some way in an activity or in something that's not healthy for doing you. Doing something recovery. you shouldn't Absolutely, be which which puts you in a bad position. You know, I will say, you know, when I tell my, I've told sponsees over the years, the people I've sponsored, the people I've helped, you know, they're always like, thank you so much. And you have no idea you saved my life. And you, I just laugh. No, no, you saved my life. It's my sponsees. It's the work I've done. It's the fellowship. That stuff is what saved me many times when I've been engaged in unhealthy behaviors, right? I mean, that's the, you know, that's the, that's my, that's my truth. But in that case, I was able to be pulled back from, I didn't even go to the brink. You went to the brink and then broke. And then you had to go down a whole nother road and hit a whole nother, yeah, you, you know, a second, of pain. yeah, a second surrender out there, like not even a sober surrender, but, uh, a using surrender, a second bottom, or if you I, want and, to believe in the bottom. And I guess the the moral of it all is that if we switch seats in the spiritual Titanic and keep going and going and going, not heeding the warnings, right, from, from those around us, not listening. Because even when you said it, I heard it. I just thought it was impossible. Yeah. He's wrong. I've done all this stuff. It's impossible. It's not going to happen. That it'll right? end yeah. in... In, in disaster. I, I think that, you know, I, listen, when you're living, when you're, when you're doing that, obviously, you know, you're just living in a, in a form of insanity, whether it's a K, whether it's a controlled insanity, right? And that's, that's the lie and the denial that we put ourselves in that position where we're like, dude, this is all manageable. I got this. Um, when you know, when you're not sharing it with other people, whatever that may be cheating. And I'm not just talking about on your spouse or a loved one. I'm talking about just in life. You're just cheating and cheating. Like, you know, when you grow up with a, with a code that it's not a crime if you don't get caught. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that type of broken thinking. But it's not until we I get introduced to men, you know, that have that and say, you know that that's okay, that that's a broken, like, you know that it's okay to admit to yourself that that's a broken logic. Like, it, so it doesn't apply. You can't apply, you can't apply a broken logic to logic. It's not going to work. What's you guys saying? You circle peg, square hole, whatever, something like that. Yeah. Whatever that, you I know. I also believe yeah, yeah. you can't fix your broken brain with your broken brain. Right. I so, right. that as well. So, you need to be another right. one for So, I need to be too, around people. So, I need to be around people necessarily, uh, especially me in particular, because I can, I can tend to get a little sensitive, right? Uh, that it's not going to humiliate me for that. To, that are gonna. So if I be, if I tell you something and you humiliate me over it and like you belittle me because I'm already in a sensitive and a vulnerable position to talk about it, and if you if I feel like you're embarrassing me over it, there I, now I got a resentment, <laughs> and now I'm gonna keep doing it just out of spite. But the only person that's still gonna affect is me. But what my experience is when when men have helped me and showed me or almost laughed with me joyously, like yeah, yeah I did the same thing. And this is what happened. You're going to lose your house and your business over it. I did. You don't have to do that. If you do X, Y, and Z, you know, you are you might be successful. Unfortunately, most of us, I know <laughs> I don't have to do that, but I think I'm going to. You know what I mean? Because benefiting from other people's negative experiences, while extremely potentially beneficial and a good idea... Generally, I have to. Uh, yeah, no, you you're, you're gonna have to. You have <laughs> to spiritually disagree. Experience. Yeah, you're right. Nice. And and again, you know, I, I it was always the same. Like my sponsor and just the guys in the fellowship would always be like, but go out and get your own pain. Yeah, like go get it. And uh, you know, when I've had close members of you know friends and family, uh, in you know when it's that close to you, it's hard to, it's hard to think logically. And I remember my sponsor said, um, yo, you're gonna you're gonna have to let him hit bottom. So like you know what I mean? Because it was so close to me. He's like, dude, don't rob him of his bottom. Because I kept on trying to fix it and ke catch it and stuff like that. And I was sick over it. Yeah. Like the spirit, like the, what I gave up to be the bearer of that pain, you know, willingly, of course. But, you know, and again, I did the step work over it. But it was just like I was willing to surrender all just so 
I could just keep robbing that individual of his bottom. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's dark. Now, it I'll tell dark. you that this, the, okay, first of all, where uh, the other side is the name of the podcast. I'm supposed to be checking. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sorry, For anybody in. signed in, this is the other side, and this is our live podcast, and we're talking about switching seats on the spiritual Titanic. I'm here with Mark Bonani and Stas Patsaris and me, Richie Hessian, and we're just blathering on about the insane things that we've done in our recovery and uh, going down that dark road and engaging in unhealthy behaviors, switching seats on the spiritual Titanic, getting through the other side of it or not, depending on what goes on. Mm. There's so much that can be, be you know benefited from other pieces of experience. Now, you know, again, we're not saints and we're not, you know, we're not driven white as snow. And I've, I've myself engaged in a lot of behavior in recovery over 23 years you know, I'm vaping, right? People say, oh, you're vaping on the thing? Like, yeah, I'm a nicotine addict, right? I mean, you know, you know we don't refer to it that way, right? But that's the reality of it. How much unmanageability is coming from that? Which is the question, right? right. So maybe this is a little bit Can't make it through a podcast but it's, without it. No, I know, but it's longer term unmanageability, right? Like there is oh. unmanageability there when I'm 64 and I'm having problems breathing and I get, o, uh, o, what do they call that? O, OPCD? COPD. COPD. I mean, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, maybe there'll be unimaginably later. Guess who pays the price for that? Not just me, my kids, kids my right. grandkids, whatever, later on in life. I don't, whatever, that's for, but we'll worry about that later, right? Like, you know, 20 more years. Um, look at eating. Like, I'll tell you, for food for me, like, the YouTube pretty kids don't have that problem, right? And, um, you know, I always hope that you both, one or both of you guys, either lose your hair or get really It's big. happening. You know what I mean? Like, I wish that on both of you. But what, um, if, what, if, what if you lose your hair and you're like one of those good-looking ball guys? Yeah. You know? Like, I'd hate you for that, too, right? probably. You have a beautiful, um, uh, you know, no, beautiful but, skull. No way. But, you know. They got yeah, surgery yeah. for that but, stuff. But, you know, the food thing, I'm not going to, we can have a whole thing on, on food and eating, right? Like, but that's switching seats as well, right? And that's, talk about a, a, a developing an unhealthy behavior that is something that happens slowly over time, right? The long-term effects of that. And, uh, you know, you, you know, you, you think about uh, self-esteem, right? Like, I, I'm not somebody who looks in the mirror and says, like, oh, I feel bad for myself and whatever. It is what it is, right? I'm cool as, I'm, I'm, yeah, you know what I mean? I I'm got as you. cool as sliced bread, like, there's yeah. no question. But, you know, it's definitely and become such an unhealthy thing. And I'll throw it out there just as because we're having these kinds of conversations. And I will say for anybody who struggles along those lines, there are certain things that you can struggle with spending. Some people go on like crazy spending sprees where they have to go to like Debtors Anonymous. And then there's stealing. You know, right? Well, yeah, absolutely. Shoplift. Again, all the high risk behaviors, the men or the women, depending girls or boys, porn, massage parlors, you know, the whole sex avenue, which could go in 50 different directions, the gambling stuff, which can go where it goes, the... Um, the sometimes high risk other, you know, activities that, that people engage in, you know, food is one of the ones that people can engage in, in, in recovery, you know, soda, Coca-Cola classic became my beer basically. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm told the way sugar and the way it manufactures, it's very similar and blah, blah, blah. And so that can become like an addiction in, in recovery. Um, you know, it's hard. The hardest thing for me that I've dealt with in my recovery, and I'll just, I'll throw it out there. See, everything else I can, you know, I go to God, I write inventory, I, I work with a sponsor, I engage in spiritual activity, and you cut that thing out of your life. Don't do drugs, I don't drink alcohol, you know, I don't smoke marijuana, I don't do any of that stuff. That stuff is all gone, that's out of my life, 23 years. You cannot play poker online, you can, you know, gone, cut it out of my life. You can't stop eating, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because well, you'll die. Yeah. So and, now and you're asking someone like me, who's clearly addictive in everything that I do or has the capacity for that, now you're asking me to do something in moderation. And I don't do moderation. Extremists. That's a, that's a problem, yeah. right? Like in other words, why the to, fellowship for that particular problem is like hardcore. It's about unbelievably hardcore. hardcore. I went. To oh, you to did. See. Oh, I went to Maybe check. Maybe I heard out. it from you. I don't know. Oh my god, I could tell you some crazy, crazy. I won't weigh in it for the sake time. of it. Well, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like qualifications. What you hear, and I'm like, oh my god, like I'm not, <laughs> not me at all. <laughs> right. But you know, I sought an I sought an outside solution to an inside problem. You know, I, I went and got that lap band, and I lost like 85 pounds at one point or whatever. And then like anything else, you know, I know people who've even gotten the sleeve done that gained weight and put a bunch of weight back on eventually. Or the right. stomach completely. Yeah, yeah, the stomach thing. But you figure out ways, you know, if you're one of us, you figure out ways around it. Um, but anyway, you know, that's a perfect example of engaging in an unhealthy, you know, an unhealthy behavior, an unhealthy lifestyle. And once you find yourself there, you know, as with any of these things, it leads you down a road. But what you pointed out was the most interesting thing, which is, 
there's no immediate, right? It's not like I'm going to leave here and then go try and break into a deli to steal a ham. You know what I mean? Right. Not, you know, there's no, like, you know, I'm not going to go and steal money out of my mom's purse to go buy Twinkies. Like, it's not, there's not that immediate, you know, problem other than, you know, the long-term health I'm not downplaying any of it. It's horrendous, right? The long-term health effects well, of right. that kind of stuff. Oh Just my God, like alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. right. Yeah. With alcohol, you can see the negative effects right up front. Thankfully, it has that built-in. But not always right away. No, I know. Long, long time. It sneaks time, up on you, right? too. Yeah, be, uh, no right. I mean, we're being, you know, again, like you said, Coca-Cola. I mean, like, we already know what soda really does, right? It's, 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 it is. It's good it, for you. Yeah, it's not, dude. Mm. It's trash work. And it will literally, it's like, they, have <laughs> you ever seen the you YouTube? You want to switching Hold on, Do you see the YouTubes where they show you how to clean your house with Coca-Cola? Yeah. And like, you're, you yeah, can clean like, like engine dude, back. And it does, like, a spectacular Check job. Check this out. I was, in, I was in a rehab upstate New York, one of the many episodes of treatment that I had the pleasure of being on. And there was, like, a heavy beer drinker, right? Because you just made me think of it. This guy literally drank a case of beer a day. He was in the rehab. He drank a case of, of soda. soda, regular soda a day. Now, I don't know what happened to him, but I'm imagining <laughs> he, good. he had diabetes, but the well, yeah. 21 days was done. The Dude, amount of sugar. A case of Mountain Dew yeah. a day. The <laughs> amount of sugar is absolutely Like, astounding. how are you even letting this guy do yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. It's well, it's the same thing with, like, coffee with me. Drink like, seltzer, literally, I, if, when I wake up in the morning, like, um, I need coffee, like, immediately. Like, I'm, I'm not a good oh. person in the morning. And then when I get done, here's the here's how I know, right? Because I look at the the iced coffee that I get from wherever I get it from, right? And by like the second sip, I'm like, I'm gonna need another. <laughs> I'm gonna run out. Now, you know what I mean? But, but, I, this, but isn't, again, yeah. this isn't this isn't enough. It's like a, now, <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. So I'm gonna I want to throw it out there, right? Because we're gonna get ready to wrap it up, right? We don't have a particular time thing, but you know, we tell a few stories. We talk about kind of. It's very relevant to people and anybody who's in recovery lifestyle, or even if somebody who's watching this isn't in recovery lifestyle. Every human being engages in some behavior. It's kind of like the old whenever I tell my men's stories that I'll tell. And one of the things, I, there's always a reason and a moral to the stuff that we talk about, and that is, do you have unfinished amends that are sitting in your nightstand next to your bed under a book, under your keys, under yes. a bunch of stuff that you need to go open and pull so you tell a story to point that out, and then you point it out to people and they get uncomfortable, and after the thing, they go out and maybe they make a couple of those amends, they see you next time and say, you told that amends story and I went and made a bunch of rock star. So we have this kind of a you know conversation, right? You do a podcast about switching seats on the spiritual Titanic, engaging in unhealthy behaviors in recovery and how they can lead you down a road that inevitably could end up in relapse. And even if it doesn't, it can cause a lot of pain, a lot yeah. of grief. So anybody who's mm -hmm. watching, you know, what a great time to stop beginning of the year and do one of those kind of self-assessments and ask yourself, you know, if anything we're saying is hitting close to home or, you know, you're kind of like, oh God, I guess maybe I'm doing that a little too much. What a great conversation to have with your sponsor. What a cool thing to put pen to paper and ask yourself, like, I wonder, you know what I mean? It made me stop and think. Or, you know, it's always that self-assessment, that kind of gut check to say, you know, am I spending too much or in an unhealthy way? Am I, you know... Uh, what needs changing? What needs changing? What behavior am I engaged in in recovery or in my life that is not healthy and not good for me that probably could use some some changes mm -hmm. probably could use some curtail where am i lying to completely. myself that this exactly. is no big deal exactly exactly i mean you could end up with paying little prices you could end up paying uh, one of the big prices right. i was about to say ultimate that ain't the ultimate price no the ultimate price for you would have been ultimate one would have been going to jail jail which was entirely possible. I don't and, know how I didn't. Which is it's shocking in and of itself. And you're talking state prison too, which is not the federal boys club. You're talking going to a real state prison for three years can change somebody. For um, sure. Or yeah. what if you ended up killing somebody in Ooh, your car? farewell there. What if you ended up killing somebody? <laughs> what if you ended up killing somebody in your car? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Driving home right. from, from scoring. So many things that can happen as a result of it. So you can pay the ultimate price. You can pay the little prices. You pay personal relationship prices in between. But that's the whole point of this kind of stuff, right? Having these conversations, a reminder to go back, take it to a, a spiritual advisor, a sponsor, a, a loved one, someone, that a confidant, have that conversation, you know, consider and think about that, pray on it. And maybe uh, it comes to you that some action needs to be taken to change or to curtail or uh, to stop doing something altogether. I mean, what the hell? Couldn't hurt to ask. Good you guys point. have any other uh, final comments or anything uh, specific? 
I tell found, on yourself. I found you both. Uh, I found you both a little more on the boring side than I have before. I'm I honest. felt boring. Yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you. I was, I was a little quiet. disappointed. But I was quiet. Yeah, yeah. you I were was, very quiet. I was quiet. Like to the point where I started thinking, like, is this an NA thing? Did you not <laughs> admit that you've had spiritual Titanic? So bad. Kevin G is a rock star. Kevin G is a rock star. You don't know the Kevin G. I'm oh, talking I think you were that talking about. A, oh, that's Kevin. That was a that was a that was a text I got. Someone offered me money to give him a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Kevin yeah. and also to you Anthony and Seriously Drucker and uh, Stella to Stella P, um, who was all Did watching. That's just three of the names that I saw. No, we didn't see any uh, engagement. I don't know if that's because people don't really care or they're just listening to us blather on, or if no, you have a I bunch. think it's more likely because yeah. we had a bunch of people on. I personally think that our Kevin is not a rock star, and I think that the chat thing is just not working. Yeah. And people are probably like, wow, I can't imagine people, and I could see a bunch of people are signed on, can't imagine yeah. people don't have something to say about this. There's a bunch of sickos signed in these. Yeah. Is there any issues? Is there any issues? You know how many of these folks probably had some, some personal what? stuff going on? Or at least want to be abusive towards us. On my side, I'm not seeing anything like wrong. Not even getting made fun of? Like nothing. <laughs> well, you got the smoking comment, didn't you? You got the vape. Well, we one had comment. a few. We had a few, but little stuff, but no real, you know what I mean? And, and listen, but the nature, I see how many people have signed on, and with the nature of what we're talking about, people, at the very least, they're going to be abusive towards you guys. Probably not me, because I'm so cool. But you guys, definitely, they're going to say some, <laughs> yeah. even the stuff I'm saying now, people they're on the edge like, of their seats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, all right. So the total number today it was two thousand eight hundred and thirty-six people, and oh, no one had a comment. No one. That is un. It's got to be a technical thing. Thanks for nothing, Kevin. Um, We're the so anyway, thanks for joining Stas, Mark, and Richie on the other side. We'll check the chat stuff because I know you guys had stuff that you wanted to say, and Kevin ruined it and ruined the podcast for all of us. But, you know, Possibly same bad evening. time, same bad channel. We're going to do another live podcast, and hopefully nice. then it'll be uh, it'll be effective. So other than that, this is Richie Markenstoss signing off and saying, see you on the other side. Right. Ding, ding, ding. Thank you.